believe in the Lord to help us in the meeting tonight. Amen. Hopefully, maybe some of these that are sick be better. I hope so. Some that sick battled it all winter, and I thought, well, if summer comes, we'll get over it. But phew, it's like we've had an attack of it right here in the middle of the summer. So anyway, good to see you. Good to hear from you, Sister Lori. Yes, I got mixed up. I was talking to Sister uh, Fultz, and she said, oh, no, they're already out there in Missouri. And so I thought, well, they're gone. They were, and then someone said, oh, no, no, they just made a trip out there. say, praise God, we're glad you're here. Good to have you. Uh, All right. Mark chapter 8 today. I just, uh, this has been working on me. And I'm going to let it work on you a little bit. Mark chapter 8 and verse 22. He cometh through Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. When he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands upon his eyes and made him look up, and he was restored and saw every man clearly. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning for your goodness and for your mercy. And I ask you, God, to touch our hearts and touch our lives and touch our souls and give us what we need in this service today by your power and by your grace divine. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, I'd like to preach a little while on touch me again. Touch me again. This is a a very touching story to me in the Word of God, a man of Bethsaida. Uh, I don't know the Bible doesn't say it, but I, I, I would, the inference I would get here that no doubt this man probably, probably was blind from his birth. Don't say that, but, and I wouldn't, uh, you know, but I, I just feel like that no doubt this man or at least had been blind for a long time. No doubt felt like that his case was absolutely, positively hopeless. They didn't have, uh, as far as I know, there were no eye doctors in that day. They couldn't do cornea transplants and uh, reattach your retina and all that. You know, they didn't have bifocals and contacts and you know, uh, they couldn't laser surgery and cataract removal and all the things that we have in this day that they can save your eye. There they really wasn't a whole lot that could be done if you were born blind or you went blind. Basically, it was a curse. It was a sentence upon the rest of your life. You know, I, I've often thought about life and things that could happen to you. Uh, I don't really want to go deaf, although I am almost. And uh, I really don't want to lose my legs or my arms or my hands. But I would have to say, if there's anything in this world I think that I would not want to lose, would be my eyesight. I, I, I don't know of, of any greater sentence against a man than to be blind and not be able to see. Uh, not, not be able to talk would probably be a relief to a lot of folks. And to not be able to hear would probably be a relief to you because you wouldn't have to listen to everything they said. Uh, but, you know, not being able to see and, and to live your life in darkness and groping and never see the trees and never see the sunrise. You know, my God, what a terrible thing to happen to you. But one day here's a man that, that the Son of God just out of his divine mercy goes by this place called Bethsaida. Uh, I don't think it was by accident. I don't think he went by there by chance. He didn't have to go through Bethsaida. As a matter of fact, he had cursed Bethsaida. He had said, woe unto you. He had brought a curse on that town. And as a matter of fact, he would not even heal the man until he took him out of town. The Bible said he took him out of town because he refused to do any other miracles in that town because of their unbelief. 
But there was something about the heart of God, about the heart of the, of the Son of God that saw this man. And although the city he lived in was cursed, he said, I'm going to bring you out and I'm going to give light unto your darkened eyes. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory. I want to tell you, we're living in a darkened world of sin. We're living in a world that's under the curse of sin. You, you believe me? I said we're living in a world that is under the curse of sin. But I'm thankful to God that, that surrounded uh, this church and this world and your neighbors, you're surrounded by unbelief and sin. And a world that don't want God. And a world that's cursed to death and destruction. A world that's doomed for destruction. And in the midst of it, thank God, the Son of God has reached down and lifted some of us up and touched our eyes and gave us light and gave us life and gave us hope in the midst of a darkened generation. Oh, hallelujah. So he takes this man and he leads him out of town. And the, and the Bible said that he spit. <laughs> Woo! My God, that's sort of rough, isn't it? If it one place, and, and I believe, no doubt, probably speaking of the same man, I spoke that he made some clay. He spit and made some clay, and I, I think that's what we're talking about here. And he put some clay on his eyes. I, I don't really know why he did that. Maybe other, I believe he did it. You, I'm going to ask him. Maybe in the heaven you can ask him why he put clay. He didn't need clay to heal him. Hello? I said he didn't have to have any clay to heal him. He could have stood 50 yards away and said, Let your eyes be open and he'd been healed. But for some reason, there had to be a reason he spit and put the clay. Maybe it was a man's pride. I don't know, but he put that old clay on his eyes. And then he said to him that they removed the clay. And the Bible said the man looked up. Woo! And he said to you, what do you see? And he said, well, I see men like trees walking. Amen. And we know that men don't look like trees walking unless they're like Jeff, maybe. And we can put some greenery on him. And then put some green coming out the back of his head or something. He might look a little bit like a tree walking. But the, <laughs> the rest of us may look like waddling stumps. Hallelujah. But, <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, God, <laughs> so God, men don't look like trees walking. And so, you know what the Bible said? The Bible said that he laid his hands on him, that he touched him again. And he said, now how do you see? And he said, I see all men clearly. Woo! My God, and I felt like I need to preach something today. There comes a time every now and again when you need another touch of the hand of the Master. My God, my God, I want to tell you there's been some times along the journey where my vision got distorted. There's been some times as a preacher of the gospel that my vision got distorted and I did not see men like I needed to see them. Woo! My God, my God, I got discouraged. I felt like giving up. I felt like there was no hope. My eyes were blinded with tears. My eyes were blinded with doubt and disbelief. But oh my God, when, you, oh, when everything around you seems upside down and you say, God, I just can't seem to see clearly, you know what you need? You need another touch of the hand of the Son of God, in this service today, lift your hands and praise Him. Oh, let me preach to you. I don't know. Amen. I don't know. But some of you here today, the reason why you may not be able to see clearly is that your eyes have been filled with tears. Yes. Amen. Maybe. Maybe the circumstances in your life have been bitter. Are you listening to me? Maybe you have been praying some prayers that have not been answered. Maybe you've been crying over some situations that just don't seem to be making any difference. My God, baby, your eyes are blinded with tears of doubt and despair. Many your eyes are blinded with tears of sorrow and heartaches over hurts that refuse to heal. I want to tell you, brother, if your eyes are blinded.
blinded with tears. If your eyes are filled with tears of doubt and disbelief, the Son of God can give you another touch in this church this morning and let you see clearly one more time the vision and the purpose of God in your life. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Sometimes, sometimes our eyes, if we're not careful, will be filled with anger and anguish. Amen. We get, we get, in, we, you know, we get involved in situations. Amen. And, and, and we, we just look at what we call it tunnel vision. You know what I'm saying? We can only see through our own little prism. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes when we get so focused on the problem, we get so focused on, on, on the situation that that's all we can see. You know, we, we can't see anything but our problem. We can't see anything but what's going wrong. We can't see anything but all the discouraging. We can't see anything but the bad. Are y'all still here? I said we, we can't see anything but the bad and the discouraging. And the devil keep us, keeps us focused on our failures. He keeps us focused on our thoughts and the thoughts of others. We can't see any good in them. Oh my, are you <laughs> Woo! Hey Amen. I find the devil, if you're not careful, he'll get you. The only thing you'll see are the troubles. The only thing you'll see is the bad. The only thing you'll hear is the bad. You'll never see anything good. He'll see to it that you see every flaw. Everybody in the church will be a hypocrite. Everything the preacher says is that you. Oh, my God, my God, my God. When it gets like that, what you need to do is say, Master, I've got to have. Let them touch so that I can see clearly. I can see clearly. Woo! Uh, oh, what did the Bible say? The Bible said, you, you, you better, he talked about the fault finders. And he said to them, he said, before you pick the moat out of your brother's eye, he said, first remove the beam out of thy own. Woo! Oh, my God, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, sometimes I can say it's real easy to see all the faults of Brother Falcher or all the faults of Brother Silas or all the faults of Pop Smooth or all the faults, faults of Pastor Marky. It's, are you all here? We can see all the faults and all the things they need to do. But I tell you what most of us need to do. We need to find the mirror somewhere. We need to say, God, I need another touch. Remove the beam out of my mind. I got to move the beam so that I can see clearly and I can live again and I can play again and I can care again. Oh, God, touch me one more time. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Woo! Oh, my God. My God, I'm going to tell you here, and I'm going to tell you now, the devil don't care how he blinds you, huh? Oh, yeah. Now, I said he don't care. He don't care how he blinds you. Like I say, if all you can see, if all you can see, and, and believe you me, you can come in this church and you can pick out a thousand flaws and they ought to do it this way and they ought to say it that way. And, it, and I, you, know, you may be right. There may be a whole lot of things that I can do different and you can do different. And we can spend every service, amen, sitting there wondering, oh, well, why does he do this? And why? And, or, 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 we can say, God, what I really need more than anything is just another touch. I come to worship you. And you see what, what, the, what the Bible said? The Bible said he had to lift his head up. Woo! My God, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to get your head up. You've got to look beyond men. You've got to look beyond your troubles. You've got to look beyond the scars. You've got to look beyond. And then get your eyes on the prize so that you can see clearly one more time. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 
Oh my God. Oh my God. Sometimes. Oh, I, listen, listen. I'm preaching to Paul Marquis as much as anybody here. Yeah. I say, oh God. Oh God. What am I doing wrong? What is the problem? What is going on? Why in the world won't this one do right? And why won't this one act right? And why does this one keep doing that? And I thank God, what in the world? And I get, I get discouraged and I get upset. You know what I have to do? I just have to come on down here to the church and close the door and fall down around this front somewhere. And I have to keep praying until after a while I feel another touch. Until I get another touch. Until it can reach down. Hallelujah. My God, when my head is cast down. Amen. Until he can come out of the run. And say, now, Paul, hey, right here. Woo! Hallelujah. Lift your head on up a little bit. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. And he puts his hands on me. But the buster lifts my chin up and says, get your eyes a little higher. And then men are greater than they're, they're not trees. And no, 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 no. They're, they're mine. I love them. I care for them. Get a new burden. My God, play again. Get another touch. And then get in that pulpit and preach like a house is on fire. My God, my God, you just need a second touch. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo! My God, my God. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The devil loves to tell you, you can't make it. You're not going to make it. He can show you all the obstacles. He can show you all the troubles. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on here. My God, until, until, until every molehill is a mountain, <laughs> every mountain is a Mount Everest, huh? <laughs> oh, I'm telling you right now, every trickle is a rushing river, <laughs> every rushing river is a swollen river with flood, huh? Come on now, he'll take your problems that are about that big and fill the room with them, hello? My God, my God, make you think everybody's against you. The world don't love you. Nobody's going to come to church. Ah, oh, my God, my God. He'll tell you over and over again, nobody loves God. Nobody loves holiness. Hey, your neighbors are against you. Your boss is against you. Oh, my God, my God. And if you don't watch out, you get your eyes so blinded. You'll be so blinded by men. You'll be so blinded by doubt. You'll be so blinded by fear. You'll be so blinded and by despair that you want to give up. Woo! But what you need is not to give up, but get to an altar and say, God, I've got to have another touch. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Glory. I'll think about our young people. And, 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 hey, here's the way it is. My God, when they're young, that's, that's not fool. That's, that's not fool. They struggle. You hear me? They struggle. Yes, they do. Yes. They come to church and God touches them. They don't hardly get out the church door. My God, so there's a thousand bombardments of the devil against their soul. Huh? Amen. The devil says, Amen. Just look at that girl. Woo! Man, just look how good you look. You got a little slip around your eyes. Huh? Yeah. Woo! Huh? My God, if your eyes look like two burnt holes in a sheet, look how nice you'd look. Huh? My God, my God. Huh? Hey, all your, your complexion's a little weak. Huh? If we could just put some of that powder on you, hey, amen, and put some blush in your cheeks. Huh? Yeah! Woo! My God, if you get that old granny skirt off, huh? hey, amen, it looks one like you bought it at a half off sale, half off the bottom and half off the top. Huh? How much better you'd look. Huh? Huh? My God, he'll get your eyes so messed up you can't see. Hey, but young people with the devil says that. Say, forget it, devil. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to go to a youth rally. I'm going to go to a youth camp and get another touch and rise again and see clearly how God wants me to live and what God wants me to do. Woo! Sometimes. 
You need more than just a second touch. Sometimes you need a second word from God. The Bible says that the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. Woo! Hallelujah. Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach the words that I gave to you. What did he say? I'm the belly of hell, cry out! Huh? Out of the belly of hell, cry out! You heard my cry! Woo! And the word of the Lord came to him the second time. Woo! Said Jonah. Amen. The message is still the same. My God. <laughs> Woo! I caused the fish to throw you up. I left the seaweed from around your head. Amen. And the word came the second time. Amen. Go and preach the word of God, Jonah. It's the same message. It's the same truth. My God, my God. I want to tell you the message has not changed. It's still holy in this or hell. It's still repent or perish. My God is still come out from the world and be shepherds, say of the Lord. Amen. If you're confused, if you're mixed up, if you're in the belly of hell tonight, or this morning, rise up and hear the voice of God again and lay outside the world and sin and serve the God of heaven. Woo! Oh, Your vision's got cloudy. And the message has got murky. And you have a feeling somehow that it's a new day. And it's a new way. And you can live like you want to. And dress like you want to. And walk like you want to. And talk like you want to. My God, let me tell you, the message is still the same. You've got to arise. I said you've got to arise. And you've got to walk. And you've got to go. And you've got to live. In the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Some of you here today, they made you say, Preacher man, I felt like God spoke to me. They made God told me to do this. Or God told me to do that. Now, I want to tell you, I said in that young, cl- young people's class today, I said if God called you to preach, they made get your Bible, get a hold of God, and get to preaching, hallelujah. If God called you to be a Sunday school teacher, amen, get a hold of the Bible, find a place to pray, amen, rise again, hear the call of God again. If God raised you up to drive a bus or knock on doors and reach little children, and you've got lazy, you've got soft, or you've got too tired, or you've lost your vision, or you've lost your burden, I want to urge somebody today to find a place and pray and say, God, I've got to have another touch. I've got to hear from you again. Woo! Hallelujah. Are you here? My God. <laughs> Come on here. Woo! My God. If you've lost your burden to pray, if you've lost your burden to read the Bible, if you've lost your burden to come to the house of God, if you've lost your burden to serve God, oh, you say, what should I do, preacher? Should I quit? No. What you need is another touch. What you need is to hear the Word of God again and rise. I said, and rise and do what God told you to do. You just need another touch. Hallelujah. Woo! I'm going to tell you how it is. I'm just going to tell you just exactly how it is. Some of you are sitting right here today. Sitting right here in this building today. Are doing things you want to testify that God convicted you of. You're going places. You said God told you not to go. You're doing things. You've testified in church that God told you not to do. <laughs> What's my problem, please? I'll say exactly what your problem is. Your vision got blurred. <laughs> and you need <laughs> to touch you again. It's not the church. It's not the preacher. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. No, no. The problem is you need to look up. Woo! And get God to touch you again. Woo! 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 Woo!
I said, you just need the master to touch you again. Hallelujah. If you can't see sin, if you can't see the world, if you can't see the darkness, my God, you have got to have another touch of God in your life so that you can see clearly one more time. Jeremiah said, call unto me. Call unto me, and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Whoa, I feel the Lord here this morning. Hallelujah. Stand up, son. Hallelujah. Stand up here. Come out here. Whoa, I feel the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you. Hallelujah. He said, He said, I will show thee great and mighty things. Which thou knowest not. Woo! I'm gonna anoint your eyes. I'm gonna anoint your vision. I'm gonna lay my hand on you again. My God, you're gonna see. Woo! Hallelujah! 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 My God, you can see the goodness of God. My God, you can see the power of God. If you get another touch, you'll lift your head up and you'll show you great and mighty things which you know not. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I went by yesterday. Visited Natalina Reinhardt. Who two weeks ago, they told her family she had a 2% chance of living. I told you I went to visit Francis Savage. And on the way by, I saw her daughter and son weeping. I would go, I walked past them, got on, went up the fifth floor and see Seth. On the way down, God said, stop and pray for those people on the third floor. I got off the elevator. There they were, and I just stood around, I stood, stood around, and I said, God, these people don't know me, they don't know nothing about me. And I got back on the elevator, went down, walked all the way to my car. God, God said, I told you. To pray for them people on the third floor. Woo! So I had to walk all the way back, climb back up the elevator, got off and found them. And I said, you don't know me and I don't know you, but all I can tell you is God, I don't know who it is, but God told me that I'm to pray for them. Woo! They said it's our mother. The doctor just told her that she had a 2% chance of living. I said, well, could I pray for her? And they said, sure. And so I went back in our intensive care where she was out cold. Woo! And laid hands on her. And in the name of the Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I prayed for her. And I visited her yesterday. And she was able to say, thank you. Woo! She's not completely well. But my God, she's coming out. And they said she's improving every day. Woo! What are you trying to tell me? He said, open your eyes. I'll show you grace. I'll show you many things. Which you don't know. I tell you, God is still on the throne. I tell you, God is still alive. I tell you, God is looking for a church that wants another touch. Lift your hands this morning. Woo! Hallelujah. Got that bus out there on that church pump. Stinking rotten low life devil. Tried to kill me a few years ago. I didn't quite get it done. He tried seven times, but he didn't quite make it. And I lived to tell the story. I'm here this morning. I got you know, I passed my CDL test and all that stuff. Went to take my driving test and well, he said we got a red flag. He got a red flag. I said, oh, no. Called him up. Well, Mr. Marquis, where well, you had them spells. You can't have your CDL license. Say, well, hello, tell him, hello, tell him I'm preaching the gospel right now. Hallelujah. And so uh, 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Some are preaching, honey. So anyway, praise God. So uh, people told me, say, well, so you never get that license for 10 years. You won't ever get it. So bless God, I, I, I called them. Just cut it off, honey. Uh, hallelujah. So anyway, uh, so I, 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 called, I called them up. And uh, the guy said, well, they said, Mr. Martins, we get a letter from your physician. He said, we, we like to get that taken care of. And so I went to the doc, and I had him send him in the letter. I have to send him the paper every year. I have to fill out all this paper and do all these tests and put these things on my brain and all that. And, and uh, what in my head? I have no brain, but put it on my head. And uh, anyway, and so uh, praise God through help. Went to the mailbox yesterday, opened up the mailbox. It was from the DMV, a love letter from them. I opened it up, and they said, Mr. Mark, we want to inform you that you're no longer have to fill out any paperwork and send in every year. Woo! We're releasing you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Hallelujah. I just have a feeling that I ain't going to have to wait 10 years to drive the old Holy Roller Shundai Deliverance Express. My God, we're going to drive that thing again. Hey! What is it, preacher? I'll tell you what it is. My God, he said, I will show you grace. I will show you great and mighty things uh, which thou knowest not. Uh, he owns the cattle of a thousand hills. Uh, he knows how to build churches. Uh, my God, he knows how to make a way where there is no way. Uh, lift up your eyes. Uh, lift up your head. Uh, lift up your heart. Uh, my God, lift up your spirit because God is still on the throne. Oh, hallelujah. All we need this morning is the power. I said all we need is the power of another touch of the hand of God. All we need is another breath of the Holy Ghost. All we need is another word from the Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. You don't know my case. No, you don't know my God. Preacher, you don't understand how bad, my, how bad my eyes are. No, you don't understand how great my God is. Whew. Preacher, you don't understand how bad I've been hurt. And it's distorted my view of preachers or people or whatever. I, I can't see I can't see them like I need to. Woo! That makes me proud. But I will tell you nothing will do like another touch from the master's hand to clear your eyes up and let you see. I'm done, I think. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 17, you read about those ten lepers. Remember those ten lepers that came? Yeah. And he said, go show yourself to the priest. And the Bible said, as they went, as they went, they were healed. One of the boys got to walking out of them ten. I choose to call him the temple leper. He got to walking and he realized, hey, something's happened. I believe I've been healed. And he turned around and he made his way back to where the master was. <laughs> I just want to come. I just want to thank you. Jesus said, were not there ten clinched? Where are the nine? I don't know, Lord, but, but I came back. I came to thank you. He said, go thy way, because thy faith hath made thee whole. It's made you complete, lacking nothing. Woo! In other words, that's what I believe. Such, you know, let's say, You've got leprosy in this finger. It just finally just rot off. It just drop off. You've got leprosy in your elbow. That's why your arm would just drop off. It just drop off. He, I, he may have been missing an arm. He may have had an eye that was eaten out with leprosy. He may have been missing a hand. I don't know exactly. The Bible doesn't, but, but I'm going to tell you. When he came back and he got that second touch. Whoa! I said when he got that second touch, he left there with two eyes. Two legs, two feet, two hands. Hey, my God made whole. Hallelujah. If you've been lame, if you've been maimed, 
If you feel like you've lost something, my God, could I urge you to come to this place this morning and say, Master, I need another touch. Restore my gifts. Restore my joy. Restore the Holy Ghost. Restore the power. Restore the love. Restore the burden. Make me whole one more time. Show us that. I'm going to close down here. You know, let me tell you something. get to work in bus ministry, children's church, nursing home, prayer meetings, whatever, whatever. No. Whatever you set out to do for God, it's very, very easy and very, very common. the birds, to lose the vision. Hello? And what once was a joy becomes a burden. What once was our vision becomes minister of God's Word. If you're not careful, preaching becomes a burden. It's a blessing. I'd say any preacher who, who was willing to tell the truth, i tell you there's been more than one time that they came out of a sense of duty. They were discouraged. They lost their burden. The vision was distorted. Hello? A lot of preachers have quit because they got so discouraged. They gave all they had only to be, they felt, knifed in the back. Gave all they had, they felt only to be scorned. Many have quit and thrown in the towel. Some have got bitter, some have backslid. But neighbor, the only thing you can do is get another touch. And then you'll see men like God sees them. Sheep. They're not to be driven, beaten, warped over the head, but to be fed and led. You know what David said? When he talks a song, he said, I was tending my father's sheep. You know what I'm doing, Brother Roger Falter? I'm trying to tend my father's sheep. You're not my sheep. You belong to the Father. And I'm just trying to be a shepherd to lead you. And feet you. Sometimes I don't do very good. And I ask your forgiveness. If I want to shepherd's heart. When the lion comes, I want to be willing to give my life. If the bear comes, I want to be willing to give my life. Because I understand they're my father's sheep. And I'm to lead and to feed. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm telling you today. Sometimes I need another touch. Sometimes you need another touch. Whatever the need this morning, let's come. If you don't need a touch, pray for me. I'd like another one this morning. Praise God. Come on, let's pray. Hallelujah.